chubby in between 11 and 12. Sounds about right. Got? Okay, good. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is there's another step here that's so simple you might not even think about it. After the acid reacted with the base, we had 0.005 sodium hydroxide. Well, now the sodium hydroxide has to react with the water to dissociate. Although, when you actually show a strong base like hydroxide, you don't actually have to show the water. But we have to think that the hydroxide now will completely dissociate. So this is where we got the 0.05 hydroxide. And this was important because that showed you that you weren't calculating initially the pH, you were calculating the pOH. So this gave us the hydroxide, 5 times 10 to the negative 3. And then we used the same set as before. So the pOH is between 2 and 3. Um, well, we know the pOH plus the pH adds up to 14. So um, 2 plus 12 is 14, and 3 plus 11 is 14. So is, is this the answer that you got? OK. Um, so uh, now we would be somewhere over here say. Now we've seen how to figure out a point like this on the graph. Okay, well, so we can see that even, and this is the simplest type of titration, a strong acid and a strong base, even in this very simple type of titration, there's four different situations. What are the four different situations? Well, there's an initial situation where you haven't added any base, and in this initial situation, you just react the acid with the water. Then there's the situation where you've added both acid and base, and after you react them, you might have some acid left over. Then there's a situation where you've added the same amount of acid and base, where you have no acid or base left over. And this is the situation where you have added more base than acid. So after you've reacted the base with the acid, there's some base left over. And we end up with a basic pH. And again, one key point about this is that the equivalence point is the steepest point on the graph. OK. So this was a case where we were titrating a strong acid with a strong base. The half equivalence stuff with the pH with the pK, that's like mainly for like a, like a polyprotic one? So that that mainly has to do with weak acids and bases. So maybe in a minute we can get to that. Yeah. It has to be like a buffer type of thing? That's right. base with a strong acid look like? Let's just draw the curve. Just try drawing the curve for what the titration of a strong base with a strong acid would look like. Actually, I think that you're on the, uh, on the wrong track for that. So what should we be putting on the horizontal axis here? With strong 
to the NAOH levels. So what, what goes on the horizontal axis? Is it with strong acid? So oh, you're putting in the strong yeah. acid. Oh, is it strong and strong? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking strong. Sorry. Strong. So I, I, I was drawing that making right. a strong base weak acid. Yeah, so let's, say, let's stick again with the situation where we have both a strong base and a strong acid. So the situation we just dealt with would have been described as the titration of a strong acid with the strong base. The, the thing that you're titrating with is the thing that's in the column that you're dripping down into the flask. That's the standard oh, terminology. Going way. Going from, yeah. So let's try drying that. Good. Label the equivalence point. And what's the pH there? Seven. Okay. Good. Would that have been, would I do, would that be correct if a strong acid weak base? Uh, not quite, but that'll be the next thing we talk about. So we'll get to that in a second. So now basically the curve looks like this. Here's the equivalence point. Now again, maybe, maybe to save time, we won't go through the calculations here, but this would be good practice to try to do an example like this. There's again, there's four different situations. First of all, there's the situation where we haven't added the acid yet. Well, then we would just have the original base, and we would just think of the base reacting with the water. That would tell us the pOH, which we would then translate into the pH. So this would actually be a little bit difficult because the, um, since you start focusing on the base, you would start by calculating the pOH, and then you would subtract that from 14 to find the pH. This is the situation where we would start with the acid and the base reacting with each other. Um, but at this point, we haven't added very much acid, so there still would be base left over. So then we would react the remaining base with the water to figure out the pOH and subtract from 14 to find the pH. This is the situation where we have equal numbers of moles of acid and base, so they will completely um, react with each other and there won't be any acid or base left, so then the, P, uh, the concentration of hydronium would just be 10 to the negative 7 from the water. And this is the situation where the acid and base react with each other and you started with more acid than base. So you'd end up, after the acid and the base react with each other, there will be extra acid left over to react with the water. And that will give you an acidic pH. So a similar thought process to what we have over here. A little bit trickier because you usually start by finding the pOH, at least for these points. And then you'd have to translate that into the pH. So now we'll think about titrating Point 0.1 milliliters of point 0.1 molar, this is acetic acid, if you remember from OCHEM, point 0.1 milliliters of point 0.1 molar acetic acid with point 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide. So what do we put on the horizontal axis? Yeah, milliliters of sodium hydroxide again. By the way, the Ka, which you'd be given on the test, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 for acetic acid. Well, let's start by calculating the point on the vertical axis again. So how would we go about first calculating this point?
minus some amount that was like nothing. Right. So Somewhere around 10. 